Anyone would like to speak? Shoeless John Corbin. <laughs> yes. Um. Please <laughs> have that. <clears throat> I don't know how this is going to work. See, Gretchen went out to, she went whole hog. She's up in Fort Valley helping prepare the hogs for the ham and egg show. And when Gretchen leaves town, you know, my finger falls apart, my shoes don't work, and she took the tripod. So, you know, you're probably in here somewhere. It's hard to say what this is pointing at right now. Um, I, I did want to mention uh, two things. One is, you remember last time I talked briefly about the Alapaha River Water Trail project that uh, Walls Watershed Coalition is doing. And um, it's going pretty well. We were talking to county commissions and cities around here, and they seem interested. Um, one thing that would help, wouldn't cost you a dime, wouldn't commit you to anything, is if you'd think about being willing to pass a resolution basically just saying, this looks like a good idea to us. It would, in some small way, assist with economic development. So, a thought for you. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I wish I you know, could stop talking about this one because I wish it would just go away and leave us alone. It's that Sable Trail pipeline thing. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but... Uh, a few weeks ago, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission told Sable Trail they had to look at four additional alternative routes, three of which go right down 75 through Hayhira and Valdosta, right past Lowndes High School. I think one of them is right near that. You, you were talking about a park that's over next to Lowe's, is, if I heard you correctly. So it's going to be very close to that. It's going to be very close to the Valdosta Mall. And a pipeline of that size, if it blew up, uh, there was an incident like that in South Florida, uh, a pipeline that ran between, still does I think, between the Florida Turnpike and I-95. This was only an 18-inch pipeline. It threw a 100-foot piece all the way across the Florida Turnpike. If it had gone in a different direction, it could have easily hit the nearby high school. So there's that and all the other downsides, like it's still going to drill under the Lifakuchi River and the karst limestone that is so porous that Valdosta had to put their wells 400 feet deep so they weren't sucking up water that was already leaking into the aquifer from the Lifakuchi River. So um, it's turned out to be an even bigger problem than previously because of these three additional routes. So what I'd like to ask you to contemplate on that is, could you please study the, position, the situation and take a position? Because this thing is not going to help economic development. There's nothing in it that's for, for Georgia. It's allegedly for Florida, but it turns out there's three liquid natural gas export operations already authorized right where this pipeline goes in Florida. And FERC and FEMSA, the safety organization, federal safety organization, and the Office of Fossil Energy that permitted those three LNG export operations, they're all pushing LNG exports as a way to sell the glut of gas that's coming from fracking. What does Georgia or Valdosta or Lowndes Gatti get from this? Nothing. A large, potentially leakily explosive pipeline that gouges a 100-foot right of way through the county. It's, it's not anything anybody would want to locate a business next to. So I'd like to ask you to please study the, position, the situation and see if you can come up with a position on it. Thank you.